Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall in Northern California. It's 9.43 a.m. on 12-17-2020, and it's Pacific Standard Time. I don't imagine this uh, video, I don't imagine this video message is going to take that long but whatever the Holy Spirit leads. So this is breaking information and uh, I'm receiving it now. So Father God, I pray right now for your people. I pray right now for the remnant church. I pray for the 144,000 Lord that will be sent in after tribulation to witness Lord God. I pray for the two witnesses and I pray for Israel and I pray for my enemies. I pray for the homeless. I pray for your wonderful outpouring and I pray for your soon return to come get your bride because we are in darkness as the light. Lord, I pray that the light would increase. The light would increase. But we know darkness is here, Lord, so we're ready to go home. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I won't be doing any singing. There's been a lot of hyper criticism coming at me out of nowhere. The way I pray, how long I pray, the position I'm in when I pray. People don't like my singing. They said it's better if I don't sing. And all this stuff to me is nonsense. It's criticism. It's hypercriticism. And you're missing the message. And it's sad. And I pray for you. But I mean, really, if you don't have nothing nice to say, then please don't say it at all. This is not a breeding ground of your criticism of this ministry is it's not this is a light a sword and a truth going out to pierce the darkness in jesus name in jesus name so i won't be doing any singing perhaps that'll make you happy but you're not going to stop me from praising jesus there's absolutely no way no way why would anyone even suggest that i just god i gotta let that go in jesus name i turn it over to you so we're looking at Washington, D.C. area, and the Lord had me put in the world, uh, word salt. And now he just gave me salt and light. So you see Basadia, Maryland, something called the Salt Energy Group. Uh, right down here, salt in Washington, D.C. It's G, like George. G113 Arlington, Virginia. Look at look at the zip code. 22209. 222. Uh, so and here's something called the salt line. It's over here on the east and the west. This is 79 Potomac Avenue. Southeast. So I get some type of restaurant. So now I want to put in salt and light. It'll just be led by the Holy Spirit in there. I'm just going to put it in as vanilla, not any particular. So there is salt and light. I'm looking at this area. Salt and light, salt and light. What is this? Anna, Anna Polis. Annapolis, that's how you say it, right? I'm going to go to Brussels. I'm going to be talking about, if you're interested, I'll let you know right now in advance so you know. I'm going to be talking about the a DNI report that went out about a delay in the 45 days and show you what the Lord is showing me about it. So here's Brussels. And see, the Holy Spirit speaks and I hear it. I know you can't hear it, but I hear it clearly. So now I want to put in Annapolis. I have no idea if it's over here. That's Maryland. So it's Anna Polis. See what happens if it goes back to Maryland, then we'll have to look at that area closer. And it's gonna, it's 
So what are you showing us, Laura? Look at this parole. Yeah. Don't give him any parole for this injustice they're doing on the United States of America, Lord. No parole. Nevertheless, that will be done. Chester. I'm going to leave this up for now and let's go uh let's go back to how this message came about. So I woke up this morning and uh see I started to say in my mind and it was stayed on Jesus which is a song when people are criticizing me saying so just ask yourself like really did, did they get offended and blame it on you for being a bad person no you came woe unto them that causes the offense I had to pray for like a half hour someone told me not to see I mean but God amen and I prayed for you too it says what so this morning I come out here I'm focused on Jesus and I hear this word atropo 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 and it was so clear that I thought I'd heard it before as a word or something but so I I said what is atropo mean and it means catch and it means trap so then what I did was I I looked up uh I'll show you what I did. Let's go back. I put in atropo. There's, oh, look, there's an atropo in Maryland, too. I want to look at the one in California. What? It keeps doing that. Can anybody see? There's like a V in here or a W. Can you see that? Can you see that? Let me go to uh, California. To me, it's just boring if I don't uh, if I don't sing in between. But you let me know in the comments. Okay, so here's California. That's what it was. So at, so so atropo means path. Where did I see that at? Atropo means path. How did I get that? Let me see this. So this is, uh, I put in salt. I put in Strong's 4420, and it came up salt. So that's how I got salt in my. But I put in atropo meaning path. That's what it was. And so I put in path. Watch this. I put in path in California. Now watch this. This is really interesting. And it was Nevada City. You see this healing path? This is really interesting. It was Nevada City. Like. Nevada City. Let's see. is so crazy that it's gone now but what it said was treasures along the path and now it's not saying treasures along the path well, it's where I just want to recreate everything that the Holy Spirit showed me here it is I don't know why it didn't come up on that one Perhaps the enemy is trying to block this. So watch this. It brings up treasures along the path. And this is a Nevada City, Grass Valley area. 
um, just northeast of me. And watch when you come down here. This is the craziest thing. It's over here by Lotus Lake. Treasures along the path. And you come down here. And it's like the plane I saw and made a video about yesterday. That had four round satellites. Look, one, two, three, four. Can anybody see this? Like, this is the front of the plane and this is the rear of the plane. This is the craziest thing. It's like some kind of compound. I mean... So anyway, so then the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And what's this out here? What's this? This is a really interesting place, man. If you know anything about this, let me know. What is this, a grow or something? I don't know what that is. There's a lot of grows up here, but... I'll let that, uh, and Cherokee, so I'll let the Holy Spirit explain that one. So then I, I saw that there was treasures along the path, and I saw this salt. I came over here, what is atropo mean in Spanish? Let's see if I'm even saying it right. Atropo. What? I didn't say it like that. Atropo. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I can't repeat that. I wonder where I got the word path, man. Adrepo. <laughs> Adrepo. He's lost Adrepo. it, folks. Adrepo. <laughs> I'm going to put it here, path. Because I didn't have to do that of this stuff before. It's probably because I'm not singing to the Lord. Be careful what you ask for, people. Trajectory arrow. Hmm. Orbit. Orbita. 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 Oh, bad. That's a conjunction. So then I was led to this. Now watch this. So then I was read to this. This is where I got that 4420 Strong's. See this right here? 4 to 420. Meaning salt. And then I, it, it look, it means barrenness. So the Lord was showing me that bear, salt is going to be leaving. The salt and light is going to be leaving. And it's going to leave barrenness upon the land. Barrenness. The state, usually of a woman, of having no children or being unable to have children, infertility, sterility, the state of being unable to produce offspring, in a man the ability to impregnate. What does the Bible say about barrenness? By all means, let's look that up. Indeed, some biblical tests clearly do treat barrenness as a curse. So a curse is coming upon this land through the Antichrist. Most prominently, Genesis 20, 17, and 18. Abraham then prayed to God, and God, God healed Amalek, Abimelech and his wife and his slave girl so that they bore children, for Yahweh had closed fast every womb of the household of Abimelech because of Sarah. This is, I remember that story. And then God gave Sarah a miracle baby. We're that miracle baby. We're about to leave. Amen. So then I, I was I saw an article on Twitter about this by Linda Evans. I don't know if this is the same Linda Evans that used to follow us on Twitter here. I'm not sure. It says, joint statement by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, that's CISA, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. So I found out that this is true. This is true. So here's the statement they put out just yesterday, a 3-7 day. And uh, that's where I got that. It says, Joint Statement of FBI, CISA, which is Cybersecurity and Infrastructure, and the Office of Director of National Intelligence. And he goes on to say that uh, they're looking into the United States of America's government being hacked by Russia. And they've made this emergency directive. Does everybody see this emergency directive? 
it's fine. So here we are at cyber.departmentofhomelandsecurity.gov, and this is from December 13th, 2020. It's Emergency Directive 2101. Let's look that up in Strong's. This is just how I've been led lately to put these things into the Word of God. Because the Word of God is forever settled. This means well-pleasing and acceptable. It says Romans 12 and 1 and 2. In the Greek and in the Hebrew, it says an issue. An issue. A fluid. Fully acceptable. So this is, this is going to be bitchy, the bride of Christ being prepared to go hope and I believe that suits so soon. This is pretty interesting man. Yeah. It really is. Anybody seeing anything? Is this China? So so what the Holy Spirit is showing me is that they believe it's Russia that's hacking us. I don't believe that. I'm leaning more towards China or even the deep state, the deep state. But for some reason, they were ordered to uh, to walk away, to shut down. It was an emergency shutdown. This was an emergency declaration. And so what it says, it says that uh, section 3553, I will, Holy Spirit. Apparently this video is going to run a little bit longer than I thought. Hey, it's not my will, but God's will. So I'm looking up that Strong's number. A helmet. It's the helmet of salvation. And this says a chronic illness, a disease, a sickness. So that, you know what that just brings to mind? A disease or sickness. It says to have on the full armor of God and the helmet of salvation because this chronic sickness this uh, Rona, I'm not going to talk about this too much. I'm, I'm not led to be talking about the vaccine to give them ammo to bring this channel down with another strike. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Apparently, it's morphed exactly as prophesied. Again, exactly as prophesied. It is morphed in the London and UK area into a, a stronger disease. And it's spreading like wildfire there and people are getting more sick. So that's also like an invasion. I, I feel like I hear the word invasion, invasion, invasion. I hear the word invasion. So continuing on, it goes on to say, it says, uh, we're issuing an emergency directive. This, this from Homeland Security, the cyber version. Listen, we are issuing an emergency directive to the head of an agency to take any lawful action with respect to the operation of the information system, including such system used or operated by another entity on behalf of an agency that collects, processes, stores, transmits, disseminates, or otherwise maintains agency information. So in other words, if it has government and homeland security information on these servers, it says, for the purpose of protecting the information system from or mitigating an information security threat. An information security threat. It, it goes on to say this delegates this authority to the director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Federal agencies are required to comply with these directives under the National Security Systems and the Department of Defense Intelligence Community. So it goes on to mention this company, SolarWinds. If you don't know about SolarWinds, uh, I can't bring you up to speed quick enough. You're gonna have to ask somebody else on that what happened. But their, their, their network servers or something along that line were named Orion. So now I wanna look up the word Orion. Because they've been ordered 
they were shut down and they were raided. So this is a constellation. I, what, this word hunter has came up again. Hunter. So again, this is warning that this would all happen uh, during a time of a great conjunction. It says it's located on the celestial equator. I feel the Holy Spirit all over me. This has come up before. I know it. This, this hunter, this has come up before. So it's just like a confirmation. It has to do with that uh, conjunction, man, that's coming up on the 21st. I know it. So back to solar winds. Here's the news on solar winds. Why the government, why the U.S. government hack is literally keeping security experts awake at night. That's a picture of the Pentagon. The solar winds perfect storm. Again, prophesied here. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to look up the video, or maybe I will. Winds of war, winds of change. Florida, Cuba, Maine. That's what I remember. And, and this former Trump advisor points finger at Russia for brazen solar winds hack and calls for a response. This was one hour ago. One hour ago. Let's take a look at this. Just forget about who's reporting it. And let's not let that be a distraction. I could care less who's reporting it. I'm just being led by the... Uh-oh. What's this? Google users in the U.S., Europe, India, and other parts of the world unable briefly to access their Gmail accounts, watch YouTube videos, or access online learning through Google Classroom. Tens of thousands of complaints popped up around 7 o'clock Eastern this morning along the U.S. East Coast. Google says the problems were fixed within the hour. I'm citing Fair Use Act for that, and I didn't know that to play, so I'm going to use it for educational purposes. Hackers will be able to alter or destroy data belonging to some companies. And they're pointing the finger at Russia for whatever reason. I believe they're pointing the, uh, the, the, the finger at the wrong person. It says that Russia's suspected ha hacking operation targeted five U.S. agencies. And we talked yesterday about the number five. I was on the phone with Brother Gary here 049 about the number five for like an hour and a half. I'm not kidding you. He had a dream. I'll tell you his dream. He was, he. this is a prophetic dream. He was going up in, in an elevator and it stopped on floor five. And he looked up and there were these other buttons to press in the elevator. And one of them was 19. And uh, and I, I don't remember the exact details, but somehow he hit 19 and it stopped on 18. 18, which is tomorrow. And what was so strange, because I was talking about 18 and 19, and we took that as December. Uh, what was so strange was it was only a five-story building. So we talked about the five and we talked about another a number 11. I heard Pastor Patrick Winfrey last night talking about the number 11. And he was saying it's like 10 is man-made government, 12 is God-made government, and 11 is right in the middle in chaos. And Pastor Patrick was talking about how the, the number 11 is a twilight zone period of chaos in between governments. And we're seeing that in both Israel and the United States parallel. It's fascinating. So this says last week the cybersecurity firm FireEye said it had been hacked and that its clients, which include the United States government, had been placed at risk. This week we learned that solar winds, and I believe it was Texas where the raid occurred, a publicly traded company that provides software to tens of thousands of government and corporate customers was also hacked. And I understand they were raided, their servers were raided. He added later that he suspected the attack was the product of a nation state. So basically what this means is Trump's executive order that he wrote warned if there was any type of foreign attack during the election period. And now the DNI has delayed their 45 day release. That doesn't mean, understand this, it doesn't mean it's not going to be reported. It's just not going to be told to us. They don't want us to know. 
what occurred in these hacks and that the election was actually hacked too. They, they, they can't tell us that. I mean, it would literally usher in what? More chaos and protests and riots and civil war leading to martial law. It is what it is what it is. No one can deny this. The Department of Defense said Thursday, that's today, they found no evidence of compromise. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we believe them, right? SolarWinds has been made aware of a cyber attack that inserted a vulnerability. Oh, so, so they left something behind there, some type of malware or Trojan, within its Orion monitoring products, which, if present and look, activated, activate the 37, activate the 37, could potentially allow an attacker to compromise the server on which the Orion products run. And so they're playing this all down, and they don't want you to know this. It says U.S. federal agencies, including the Departments of Treasury, Commerce, State, Homeland Security, and elements of the Defense Department, have been compromised as of Thursday. Did you hear that? I'm going to read it again. U.S. federal agencies, including the Department of the Treasury, Commerce, State, Homeland Security, and elements of the Department, a defense department have been compromised as of today. It's got to be 10, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time out here on the 17th, 10, 10. So what I want to do now is I want to go to my video manager. Boom, I'll do it quickly. Boom. This is Minister Paul in North. Hey, Minister Paul, watch me on the wall. I'm going to come out here. I'm going to do a video search of a, a walled city under siege. I put it on the community wall right here. I'm going to show you a couple of things. A walled city under siege. Now, what is fascinating about this video is I had an open vision while praying, and I saw this big city with a wall around it, and it was coming under siege. I believe that uh, that represented Israel. And I believe it represents Washington, D.C. And so I mentioned Washington, D.C. in this as coming under siege. So this is prophecy coming true. And, and what's really amazing about this was like in a circle. It was like I was looking at it from a satellite and I was getting closer and closer. And around it was nothing but desert. It was just desert and dry land. And then all of a sudden there was this city and it was almost like a a perfect circle almost pause okay so when i on july 5th 2012 when i received the prophetic dream satan was uh satan was on my left and the angel from zachariah was on my right and i was shown three and i was in the united states of america and a portal opened and the angel basically said this is where i get the three seven means war thing I said, he said, what does it mean? What do you see? And I'm like, I said, I see the number three. I, I, I see like Jesus said, it, it, uh, Jesus said, it, 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 Jodah, the belly of the well, three days. And, and uh, you know, resurrected on the third days. I see the resurrection. I, I, I see all these things. Uh, and he said, no, it means war. And then, it's, and then we're taken through this portal or open door. In the spirit and I'm shown the number seven and in the dream I said it's a very dry area maybe this is what the barren means the barren thing and I believe it also is referencing the backs that all I'm gonna say about that barren so so I see this I realize I'm in the Middle Eastern area near Israel and it's a dry desert area exactly how I just explained it right here that was July 5th, 2012. And in this video, I mentioned Roseville, which is where I just went yesterday, except it's been seven years later. Only God can do these things, saints, and he does it for us. And I saw it, 
And these prayers, hallelujah, please hear me. These prayers were coming up from this city to God, and they were being hindered. But I saw God's Shekinah glory. It glows. Have you ever seen it? Have you ever been in uh, uh, with a bunch of uh, people in church or whatever, like 100 people, and you just see this glowing light? I have. That, that's, I believe that's God's glory, just a glimpse of it. Just imagine what heaven's going to be like. Say, just imagine. I can only imagine. The prayers were going up, and the Lord showed me that this city was surrounded by his glory. It was protected by his glory. And it was, this has to be Israel. It was under siege. And, I, and then I just... Uh, began to pray again and it went away and I asked the Lord right away immediately I knew something that happened I said Lord Jesus what is this city give me a word give me some scriptures and uh, I, I said I'm going to go out and draw I've done this several times in the last couple of years what I've seen I've drawn and it's came to pass just like uh, brother uh, Ann I'll just call him Ann on here uh, in, in time truth seeker I think it is go give him some love and and, and support him, man. He's been delivered and set free through our prayers, and God is revealing things to him, and he's got, like, two views. I'm like, Lord God, you know, everything decently in order, but you were just set on my heart right then, so I, I just felt like to share that with you. Um, he has a video of, uh, explaining the five destructive spirits. Remember what <laughs> I had? To Did you hear that? Five destructive spirits? Hold on. You know, I've been pondering that video where I mentioned certain YouTube channels and how five destructive uh, spirits would be a part of the end time tribulation that you don't want to go through that. Um, let's search that now because it's the number five again. I just, who knows if YouTube's going to allow... find this urgent hold on hold on hold on urgent intercession day five this is interesting oh my urgent intercession day five vision bible flies open to the destruction of babylon and i'm going to tell you this and i'm not going to mention this because the Holy Spirit has put it a caution in my path. Those five channels I mentioned about operating in evil spirits, they're still on YouTube, most of them, a couple of them. Some of them have fell off, but we were to pray for them. While lying out prostrate before the Lord today, I had an end-time vision of a Bible's page flapping rapidly. The pages went all the way to the book of Revelation, and then it started over and it stopped at Isaiah. It is concerning the day of the Lord, God's wrath in Babylon. I also believe my wife's dream of multiple fires at the top of New York buildings growing out of control is related and show I share her dream also. And I list Isaiah. Let's see. Let's go to the scripture. Isaiah 13. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Somebody call her. Call from Egypt. It's a spam call. Trying to sell us an automobile warranty. Lord Jesus, deliver us from these people, Lord. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also commanded my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country. From the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation do destroy the whole land. Are you hearing this? I'm going to put a link. 
Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Who are the Medes? Is that like Prussia or Assyria, Iran? Yep, Iran. Seventh century, Cyprus, the Great of Pers Persia, 550 BC, 55. The Iron Age. I'm going to continue. So I'm going to put a link to this scripture. And the wild beasts of the islands. Oh, you know where I saw islands? On that map. Bunch of islands. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses. And dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come. And her days shall not be prolonged i received that jesus i received that word that you're and here's the barrenness looked at isaiah thirteen twenty. it says 19 i'll go in babylon the glory of kingdoms the beauty of the chaldees excellency shall be as when god overthrew sodom and gomorrah when god overthrew it'll be like the days of sodom and gomorrah and now Biden is trying to place transgenders in his cabinet picks of his fake win through cheating. It shall never be inhabited. Look at this. It shall never be inhabited. Barren. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Babylon's going to be destroyed. Neither shall the Arabian. Is it? Is it the Arabia, the Antichrist? No, somebody let me help me out on Isaiah thirteen twenty. Pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Hmm. Maybe it's not the Arabian I'm thinking of. It was a Muslim figure. That I'm thinking of the man of perdition. Maybe it's not Arabian. It's something else. It's the Assyrian. Right? The Assyrian. Let me keep that up. The Assyrian. Who I believe is Obama. The Assyrian. Mesopotamia. Who is the Assyrian in the Bible? At the time they encountered the Assyrians, the Jewish people were divided into a northern kingdom called Israel and a southern kingdom called Judah. The two Jewish kingdoms frequently clashed with each other. Both Assyrian inscriptions and the Hebrew Bible say that the Assyrian under King Sargon What is the Assyrian Empire known for? Their fearsome army. They were a warrior society where fighting was a part of life. It was how they survived. They were known throughout the land as cruel and ruthless warriors. So let's continue on this. Urgent intercession day five. So let's see what I have. It's eight minutes. It's 88. Eight minutes and eight seconds long. Let's see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, California on Monday, April 9th. Really? April? Did that really just. Come on, y'all. Are you there in the comments? Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Please do this for me to help spread this message. It's something about the way YouTube runs its software and its algorithms things that the more people who share it and like it, it becomes a recommended video and then the message goes out to many people. How in the world could this be April and five and all of these things without a living God? This says May 9th and the 3-7, but why did I mention April then? Let's see. Because God knew. What's up with my hair? Monday, April 9th. 
<sighs> you know what? This is really a trip. And look, this says it's May 9th. And for some reason, I say April 9th. We definitely got to hear some of this. Monday, April 9th, 2016. This is day five of late. Why did I say that? Being out prostrate before the Lord, just laying on the floor, praying, and then listening for him to respond. And I ask everybody to join me in this intercession. Not only petitioning the Lord for salvation of our lost loved ones and Psalm 91 protection and so You see, and this is a frustration of mine. Every single video I come on here and make, I try to point people to Jesus Christ and his salvation and love. And yet I see all these other channels, and they never do that. And they're the most popular channels right as we approach the end. And they're telling you lies, and they get thousands and thousands of views, and they never have to ask for a thumbs up. It, it, you get hundreds of comments, and they're following lies. And they never point you to Jesus and salvation ever in their videos. This is the narrow, the Holy Spirit said, this is the narrow path. Stay on it, Paul. This is the narrow path. Stay on it, Paul. So many other things that the Holy Spirit places on our hearts when we pray. But also to, to listen for his still small voice. We're in an, an extreme time of prophetic revelation. So this is day five. While laying and after finishing all my prayers and crying out to him, I just like I feel him right now. I began to listen, just listening to him, being still and listening. And I had a vision. This is an amazing thing. We serve an amazing God. I had a vision. And it was a Bible. And the Bible appeared before me and just began to flap. All the pages began to flap like that. And I was shown a page number. And so I immediately got up and grabbed my Bible. I'm in my office where we have our home church. And I grabbed the King James Bible I preach out of. And I went to that page number. And it's Isaiah 13. And then I'm going to I'm gonna share this word of God. And then I'm going to share a dream my wife had Saturday. And I'm going to ask you to pray. So we read the word of God. Babylon. Isaiah 13. Which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Description box. For you to study and pray over. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Yes, Hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. That travail with wrath and constellations thereof shall not give their light. What? Did I just say constellations? Oh, my goodness. Jesus. Isaiah 13, 8. This is a future prophecy. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate or barren and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it verse 10 isaiah thirteen ten. it says for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light the sun will be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not give her light to shine that reminds me of joel 2 and i will punish the world for their evil come on somebody look you please need to understand this is the message God gave you. 
about the darkness covered and how the light has to leave and it's time for us to depart the darkness. This is, was just made Sunday sermon just this morning. From the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Okay. I will punish the world. This is 11. Look. The number 11. 11. 11. And I will punish. Hit the ones if you're in the uh, comments. I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make man more precious than fine gold refinement, even a man that the golden wedge of Ophir. What's the golden wedge of Ophir? Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth and shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Are you guys catching this? And I'm telling you, if there's a watchman warning, it's right here. The port or region mentioned in the Bible, famous for its wealth. So he's going to crush the wealth. King Solomon received a cargo from Orf, Ophir every th three years. 1 Kings 10.22 which consisted of gold, silver, sandalwood, pearls, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Do you know what I remember? Do you know what I remember of this first kings? I think this is the part where it's, it's only one of two places in the Bible where it mentions 666, the mark of the beast, which is upon us, people. This is serious stuff. That, the Holy Spirit just put it in my memory that this is only the second, only the second time ever in the Bible it mentions the mark of the beast and most people miss it. Let's go see. No NIV for me. So we're looking for the number six blank blank. Man, I don't even like saying that word. Queen of Sheba. And King Solomon made, made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target. Let's come down here. Here's the scripture I just read about the peacocks and apes, which I found amazing. Another 600 shekels of Silver. I'm going to have to put 666 six, six. in the Old Testament right here. So what was that? In Look at, in the Bible, 666, six, six. I'm telling you this is upon us. We all know where it's coming from. I'm not going to say the word. I'm not giving them any reason to bring this channel down. 666 is the number of talents of gold Solomon collected each year. In the Bible, 666 is the number of Atticum's descendants who returned to Jerusalem and Judah from the Babylonian exile. Are you seeing this? No, 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 look. Come on, somebody, man. I'm making this bigger. This is why I can't make short videos. Factorization. Look, it says, my goodness, two times three. I guess, is that to the second power? Is that what it means? Times 37. 37. The angel said it meant war. Look, look. Is this actually true? Yeah, so I don't know what this does for this dude. Two times 32 times 37. Two. Oh, yeah, I made it big. I'm not bored, you guys, am I? 
because I have like <laughs> two times thirty two times thirty seven. So that's five, six, seven. So there's seven times thirty seven. How do they get? Can anybody do this math for me? How do they get the six, six, seven? I, I think this leads to the second power. I don't know nothing about that. Ezra. 213. 13 times 2 is 26. You know who gets the number 26? Kelly Leba. Kelly Leba, go check her channel out. Subscribe and give her some encouragement. Anybody else ever see the number uh, 26? Oh, so it's mentioned three times. Maybe it's mentioned a lot more than I know, but God is bringing it to light. You do not want to be a part of this more. That's why I'm, I'm telling you honestly, my personal opinion, uh, not to say anything about anything. <laughs> I try to be careful, y'all, so I'm not taking the max, and my wife isn't either. The children of Attica, 666. So here's the thing. In Revelation 13, it says, now here is wisdom. And it gives you this number, and it says, count the number. Saints, we are getting so close, so close. Even if you add this together, 2 plus 1 plus 3 is a 6. I feel led to move on from that, Jesus said. The sun shall be darkened. And then I'm going to go down to verse 13. Description in, in the night. So I'm going to... I'm going to now share a dream my wife had on Saturday. We've both been praying over it. I was waiting for confirmation. I just caught something too here. My subscribers have went up. Finally, they I was I was, I was kidding you. I was just a couple, a handful of subscribers away from hitting 46.4 for the entire year of 2020. For the entire year of 2020. I was not be able to move off 46.3. The entire year they kept me at the same amount of subscribers. I kid you not. That's impossible to do with a channel of this size. But look, now it's 46.4, which equals 14. 14. And so I feel that this is a confirmation to that. And so... Here is her dream, and it's short. She had a dream where she saw the Twin Towers in New York uh, that were brought down. She saw those two towers, and they were brought down. So that's already happened. And I was telling her, well, the Freedom Tower stands there. Now, so there's another building in their place, and it's taller than the other one. And she said the, the dream changed to an area of New York that she recognized, and buildings began to catch on fire. This is very significant. From the top, not at the bottom or in the middle, but they were catching on fire on the top. And as, as she was shown these New York buildings on fire, they began to multiply and multiply. And as the dream ended, there was so many fires breaking out in New York that in the dream, they were not able to keep up with them as the fires multiply. And so we prayed over this and, and uh, we were shown that this, these fires started from above. That's significant. So you have to think, well, what, what could start a fire at the top? You know what I just heard? Fire coming down from heaven. You see, even back then I had trouble with my, my eye, but I have eye surgery now. I can see. And not the bottom. And be in prayer over that. Uh, 
that that's her dream and this vision. I ask you to share this. I ask you to read this. And I ask you to be in prayer. There's no other way to say this. The end of all things is at hand and it's being shown to, to everyone. And I ask you, what are we doing about it? Let me show you the final thing the Lord has instructed me to show. So, it's called Winds of War. Oh, there's an update on it. There's a few of them. The one I wanted to show you is this one. It, it, it mentions Cuba, Florida, and Maine that I remember. Watchman warning, Cuba, Florida, Oregon, Maine, winds of war, winds of change. Because I've been hearing something about Maine and an earthquake up in Maine. Can, can people elaborate in comments about what's really going on in Maine? Because some people say this and other people say that. But there was an earthquake there, right? Or was it something and then they blamed it on an earthquake? Let me know in the comments. And why are you down there hitting the like button? consider subscribing so that's one of them the very next one I'm gonna go through a couple quick here it says beware when the four winds blow repent now while there is still time PM Netanyahu meets with Jared Kushner and Jason Greenblatt so the, apparently there is a four winds scriptures in the Bible. I'm not done yet. I'm working my way there. Look, 3 7, Ezekiel 37. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, O son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath and breathe on these slain that they come to life. Jeremiah 49 mentions the four winds from the four ends of heaven and will scatter them to all these winds and there will be no nation. Daniel 7 and 2, it says, I was looking in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Zechariah 2 and 6, it says, Ho there, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord, for I have dispersed you as the four winds of the heaven, declares the Lord. Daniel 11, 4 says, But as soon as he had arisen, his kingdom will be broken up. So he's talking about a king here. And parceled out towards the four points of the compass. Daniel 8 and 8, hey, where did I get the 8 and 8 from the length of that video? 8 minutes and 8 seconds. Then the male goat magnified himself exceedingly. I believe they're talking about the AC here. But as soon as he was mighty, the large horn was broken. And in its place, there came up four conspicuous horns towards the four winds of heaven. What, what's going on here? Zechariah 6. These are the four spirits of heaven going forth after standing before the Lord of all the earth. Is this is what they're, is this after the rapture and after the great tribulation when the four angels come, the reaper angels, and they began to reap the harvest of those that were left behind? Is that what this is? Yeah, 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 yeah. Matthew 24. And he will send forth his angels with the great trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Now, so hear this now. And it's also Revelation 7, 1. I have the Holy Spirit all over me. <sighs> After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth or on the sea or any tree. This is really, really deep, 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 deep. So please understand that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 
Jesus says a trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise first and those who are alive that remain and, and the people are caught up into heaven in the clouds, in the clouds. So remember, <clears throat> remember the rapture is before tribulation. You can believe that or not. Let's not debate about it. At that time, people are caught up, harposo, snatched up. At this time, after after the great tribulation ends, it is then and only then that the four angels look where they're at. They're at the four corners of the earth. They're not up in the sky. So it's two different events. It's the rapture and the, the second coming. One is up in the sky and the second one is on the ground. It, they can't be both. Because if we're caught up in the sky with Jesus, who is the word, then there's no way that would be gathered by angels because we've been already caught up by Jesus. It's that simple. Hallelujah. 352 instances, which is a 3-7. Let's go back to our war stuff. Trajectory and Trump and winds of war. The spiritual significance of all these. Uh, what's this one? The spiritual significance of all these sudden NorCal fires and extreme winds. Hodgepodge and potpourri in Washington, D.C. Watchman warning. So this is an update. I, I'm not familiar with this one. This was an update to the Florida, Cuba, Maine one. Trajectory in Trump wins and war exposing the Illuminati false flags in advance. Hey Amen. We've done that here. Certainly have. Is it really? Is that an aircraft carrier? I wonder if that's the Washington or Lincoln. Let's see. It's Abraham Lincoln. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please consider liking the video, sharing the video, even if it just means like pasting it somewhere else and telling others about it and then subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Uh, it, it was wonderful to hear my wife and I say that. It, that was not singing. So, this is Minister Paul and my beautiful wife, Gail Maxson. Hi, everybody. U.S. commander warns of Iranian attack in the Middle East. So, we've come full circle. How, how long have I been talking? An hour? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to apologize. A lot of people said they like the singing. Amen. Let's give God the glory. A lot of people said they like the singing, and a lot of people said they like the longer videos. So here we are. Use us, Jesus. Send us. We'll go in these last hours of light before the darkness falls. I feel the Holy Spirit on that, saints. And yeah, we're coming to you with a watchman warning. It's 112319. So, and then we're going to do an update. So I want to give this warning. I, the Holy Spirit just put in my spirit. And then uh, we'll give an update. My wife will give an update. <clears throat> so the article an hour ago says that U.S. commander warns of Iranian attack in Middle East. And then see how my uh, throat does that as soon as I make a video there. Yes, and good. Look, it says the deployment of 14,000 additional American troops to the Persian Gulf. There's that number 14 again. 14 generations. Go read Matthew 1 when it talks about the 14 generations to Jesus. Clear that up. I'm not, I'm not having that. <clears throat> Come on. And that was. Okay, so this is coming out of Bahrain. The commander of American forces in the Middle East says, so they're the attack with. Uh, God's will be done. It's just like Trump in this impeachment thing. I do not believe, I'm going to go on the record and say, I do not believe Trump will be impeached. So we'll see how that goes. But as you can see, we have the head of Israel and the head of the United States. So let me clarify this. So what I, I, what I said was, I don't believe he's going to be impeached. And what I meant by that was removed from office. And I prophesied here. This is something really interesting that the Holy Spirit has brought up an opportunity for me to say. I also prophesied that Trump would remain in office. And some people are just waiting in the wings 
to come dispel this as a false prophecy. But let me tell you something. The election was November 3rd. Today's December 17th, and he's still in office. Right? So he has remained in office, and the prophecy has fulfilled. And, and, and now we're talking about five governments, five government agencies being hacked. An election fraud. President Biden and uh, Kamala Harris has not given up their uh, Kamala Harris has not given up her Senate seat. Why is that? Why are Why aren't they? Well, because they know there was uh, fraud. United States, just like in prophecy, both under basically indictment. Impeachment is like an indictment for those who don't know. But I don't believe Trump will be impeached. Even if they it passes in the in the House, I, I still believe that the Senate will just reject the whole thing. What I did hear though is that Trump wants a trial. I think that's Trump what Trump is demanding a trial. He wants a trial, which is interesting because he wants to bring out the dirt on Obama and Biden. And the Clintons, he wants it all to come out. He's like, if you're going to attack me for a phone call, I want it all to come out. And they're scared now. The Democrats are scared. And you know what? They should be scared because they're a bunch of crooks. They're all <laughs> that, crooks. This okay, was four anyway, years ago. <laughs> no, four years ago. <laughs> oh, I don't know. They got on a heater, see? That's why i got to be careful. Okay, so it says, my judgment is that they're possible will attack again. I believe the target will be Israel. Then as I read on, look at this. It says, it's the trajectory. And then instantly, it says, it's the trajectory and the direction that they're on. In other words, they're on a trajectory to attack again. Iran is, and it'll be a big attack. Mm. And so, as soon as I read this, I remember I had a word. It was trajectory and Trump. And so I, I come over here and I find it in video details. There's the video. It's 2017. It was October of 2017. And I was talking about trajectory and Trump. I'd actually heard the... Hey, wait a minute. The file name is October 9 Fires. October 9. Remember that. October 9. This is October 10 on this video. Eleven twenty-three. Here it is. It's how this, I knew it. I just, I'm amazed. And look, the number six is up here. Saints, this is a watchman warning of the highest precedent and order in the kingdom of God. A walled city under siege, open vision while praying. How I started this thing off is also October 9. October 9. <sighs> Remember to like. I put this on my community wall before any of this was revealed. This is Minister Paul in North... I tell you how many times we have to hear that in this house. Right here, three hours ago, October 9. And underneath that, Joel 2. And look, Joel 2.17. That's today's date. Buckle up, saints. Buckle up. Thank you for your encouragement and support. We love you with the with the love of a copy love of Christ Jesus, and we pray for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.